how did you decide how much horror to put in, especially with the seven deadly sins? Well, just a little bit. I mean, th to me, this was my chance to do the kind of movie that I grew up with and, and loved and made me fall in love with movies. Yeah. You know, like Gremlins or Ghostbusters or, and Goonies right. was a big inspiration, like early Amblin movies and things like that. Because a lot of those movies have, you know, they're like a fun sense of adventure, but they also have like real stakes. And, you know, th those were the kinds of movies that I loved as a kid. like. Raiders of the Lost Ark, which is like, yeah, fun adventure, but then you have people's faces melting and it's like, Ooh, a little scared. Um, Multiverse of Madness, it is, it'll be a big MCU film with scary sequences in it. The way, when I was a kid in the 80s, Spielberg did an amazing job. It, I mean, there are horrifying sequences in Raiders that I would say when I was a little kid and do this when their faces <laughs> melted. Or, or Temple of Doom, of course, or Gremlins, or Poltergeist. If you were wondering why now are Marvel trying to make a horror comedy, well, you have Shazam to thank for that, because it showed Marvel, oh, we can make comedies that aren't just comedies, and you have Aquaman to thank for having Black Panther 2 feature Atlantis in it as well. So yeah, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. This is definitely the best directed MCU movie by far. The action scenes aren't the best, but the directing certainly is, and I didn't believe it, but yes, Sam Raimi does put a lot of his staple horror scenes into this movie, and it is by far the most creative thing that I've seen from the MCU. There was one death scene which reminded me of a death in Shazam, although Shazam made it more horrifying, but Sam Raimi definitely did some grisly deaths that were smartly edited to get a PG-13, even though I definitely do think they could have been pushed a bit further and still maintained the PG-13 rating. The cinematography was also the best that it looked out of any MCU movie. Even the color grading, it actually had high contrast and punchy colors for the first time, and this felt like the first MCU movie to properly try something different. Whenever they usually try to do something even remotely different, they still find a way to keep doing the same thing they usually do. But this is the first MCU movie to mostly commit to something different, without forcefully shoving in comedy, because what the MCU and that is what we do. There are no jokes that I can recall that undercut the seriousness of a situation, and that massively improved my experience of watching this MCU film. A common complaint that people seem to be having is that the movie is corny and has bad dialogue. And this confuses me, because all of the MCU movies are corny and have bad dialogue. I felt that this one actually knew that and calibrated its jokes accordingly, whereas the other MCU movies always act so proud of their jokes and think that they're being genuinely funny when they say vegetarian or beef or so on and so forth. All around, this movie definitely had less humour and it didn't have any dumb jokes to ruin a serious moment, which I can tell you makes an MCU movie so much freaking better. Really it does. This is also the first time that the MCU have hired a big, well-known director to direct one of their movies, and it really shows. Anytime Sam Raimi has full control, this movie is so, so good. And this brings us to my problems with the movie. There were several scenes in the film that I didn't recognize any of Raimi's direction. The cinematography looked more generic and less creative, the staging of shots felt rushed, and even the action felt like it wasn't Sam Raimi's anymore. It's like Marvel took the directing duties away from him altogether, and unfortunately, that's how I felt about a big chunk of this movie. The film constantly goes back and forth where it feels like Sam Raimi is directing, and then Marvel are directing. Anytime Sam Raimi is directing, the movie is so much fun and is doing all of these new things and is so awesome, but when Marvel are directing, it feels like just another MCU film. And this movie underwent massive reshoots where, according to Bruce Campbell, who is very forthcoming about Hollywood, said that the studio gave Sam Raimi a bunch of stuff to reshoot and he had to shoot it. So much so that he doesn't even know if Doctor Strange is still in the movie. The only thing that didn't change in the filming of this film was the title. <laughs> strongest line. Goes, so true, so it true. It is so true. It's really true. <laughs> and that is this movie's biggest downfall. It feels like Marvel was so close to fully committing to Sam Raimi's vision, but they got cold feet and told him to reshoot a bunch of the movie. The film also feels like it was heavily cut, as there were several parts of the film that felt very rushed, and things just started to happen with little to no build-up. And you can tell that things were cut. For example, if you watch the trailers thinking that when you see the movie, you would see how Wanda got this blood on her. Well, you don't. She just suddenly walks into the scene with it, and that was so cheap. Also, when this battle happens, I was shocked that we got here so quickly. This movie was originally supposed to be 2 hours and 30 minutes, and it shows. The CGI was also really bad at points too, and I'm specifically talking about the green screen. It was so bad, it was downright distracting at points. Now, in typical Sam Raimi fashion, there was the odd CGI effect that was meant to look fake, and that stuff was fine, such as a third eye that shows up on one of the stranger's forehead. 
right? And I could have sworn that Zombie Strange had a mix of CGI and practical effects, but the rest of the CGI was below par, especially for a movie with this sort of budget. But I have definitely seen worse CGI in MCU movies before. I also thought that the music from Danny Elfman was not up to snuff, because the actors were doing their best job, so was the director, but the music just wasn't there. It was the same like most MCU soundtracks. It was passable at best. Even this scene where Wanda and Steven are having this intense conversation, the music wasn't doing anything. It was just there, but was not setting up any atmosphere. The music in the Batman when he is having a conversation with the Riddler was super intense and really made the scene better. But in Doctor Strange 2, the music was a big letdown and is one of the biggest reasons that I was not as invested in this movie as I should have been. Also, Wanda's transition happened way too quickly, and I really feel like we needed more time to actually see that happen, as opposed to just a mid credit scene at the end of WandaVision. That is not enough to showcase the downfall of one of the big MCU characters. And the villain's motivation and storyline in this movie is very much like Kingpin from Into the Spider-Verse and Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2. Also, the Illuminati could have been set up and utilized a lot better too. They were ultimately pointless and they weren't the smartest bunch either. And I didn't really feel any excitement when I saw them on screen. And you could write them out and the movie would be no different. They were only here for fan service and they weren't even on screen for long either. So overall, I liked this movie. It wasn't great. If anything, I feel like the story is the weakest part, but it was the story that Raimi was given and he definitely elevated it with his directing style. But it does feel like a generic MCU script, and I felt that the movie was missing that punch, and I really think that it was the music. I wanted to tear up during this scene, but the music did jack shit to get me there. I mean, even the music with Steven crying in episode 5 of Moon Knight was so much better and more effective. But yeah, this movie was definitely fun, but the flaws I mentioned really held this movie back from being great, and as a result, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness gets a 7 out of 10. I do think that this movie is much better than No Way Home, and unlike No Way Home, I actually want to see this movie again, and I will once it comes out on Disney+. Plus. I will say though, that when you hear the title Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, you expect something even more out there with regards to the multiverse, but it felt like it didn't fully live up to its potential. That being said, the madness was certainly there, and I seriously doubt it, but I really hope that we get an extended cut of this movie because I feel like I did not watch the whole film. Or better yet, a director's cut where we get all of Sam Raimi's original vision in there because I really do want to see this movie when it's the full-on vision of Sam Raimi. But it's the MCU and you're not really going to get that from them. In which case, I wish DC picks up Sam Raimi just like they did with James Gunn and then they can give him full creative control. That is something that I would really want to see. But with regards to the MCU and how they're trying now to add something in different, I personally want to see even more MCU movies try and push the boundaries like this movie tries to. Because honestly, when this was being an MCU movie, that's when I was having the least amount of fun. But when it was being a Sam Raimi movie, that's when I was having the most fun. Oh, and the first mid credit scene, I couldn't care less. The second credit scene, if you're a Sam Raimi fan and are in on the joke, then you will love it like I did. So yeah, comment below with your thoughts on this movie and let me know what you thought about it. I personally want DC to pick up Sam Raimi just like they did James Gunn, because Marvel only allow their directors to go so far, but DC usually let their directors go as far as they want. And I really, really want to see Sam Raimi direct a movie where he is given full creative control and allowed to go as crazy as he wants. So I really hope that DC pick him up and let him direct a movie. If not that, then I hope Sony brings him over and lets him direct Spider-Man 4 and put a nice end to his Spider-Man movies. So, thanks very much for watching, guys. Comment below and let me know what you thought of this movie, and I will see all of you very, very soon. Take care.